I was never on the board of the ASF. <laughs> I should, uh, there you go, participation. Um, so Jim's right, I, I'm actually not here to talk about technology at all. Um, maybe in a, in a broader context. What I actually want to spend some time thinking about, and I'm gonna have a request for everybody as, as contri uh, contributors to open source communities, as leaders in, in companies that, that do open source, um, but I'll come back to that request in a minute. So I want to step back and, and remind everybody about some context, that the typical enterprise organization is, is kind of living in this world of, of a lot of change, right? So we can all agree that open source, you know, cloud, just software in general has really fundamentally changed the economy, the world economy, the way that we interact with companies, the way that companies interact with each other in this very fundamental way, right? Agility, technical aptitude, ability to respond to market conditions that are changing, these things are just how you survive now as a company. But even beyond that, right, our connected world of information technology is, is one thing, but we also see technologies from other areas of science colliding with IT. And we've entered this phase as a society, as a global society, where change is now happening at such a rapid rate that humans and organizations are struggling to actually embrace it, adopt it, and adapt effectively. Now, most of you are technologists that are probably, you'd consider yourself to be you know, pretty up to date on what's going on in your particular part of the world, right? I think we all like technology here. Anybody here not like technology? Yeah, cool. All right, the one guy in the front <laughs> is at the wrong conference. Um, <laughs> I love technology, right? I, I love the, you know, the new things. I, I love actually embracing um, new opportunities. I love uh, looking at how we can combine work from AI with you know, cloud platforms and seeing the possibilities there, right? But think about someone whose job isn't to pay attention to the latest and greatest changes, right? Who can't keep up with the pace of innovation that's happening in the broad technology landscape. It's like a giant wave, the tsunami that's constantly crashing on them. Multiple tsunamis, they're hitting them over and over and over again. And it's really confusing. And I spend a lot of time with large enterprise, mid-sized enterprise, IT directors, CIOs, but also leaders in the line, lines of business. And they're really struggling with this pace of change. So, you know, you might say, yeah, they have to navigate this wave, right? Now, we in the Cloud Foundry community have been using this metaphor of a kayaker as the right way to approach navigating the world of change that we live in, right? You need to ride these waves. You need to figure out how to navigate through them. Um, you don't want to be knocked over by them, right? So it requires balance and requires agility. And lots has been written. Um, you know, Nicole talked a lot about how DevOps, uh, it's, we're able to measure effectiveness of software delivery um, by looking at you know, more agile practices, both in operations and, and software development. Um, there's, you know, there's macro um, questions about can businesses maintain sustainable competitive advantage anymore? No, um, they have to actually be able to respond constantly and change what their competitive advantage is as the market dynamics change around them. Um, but I'm here at an open source conference, of course, right? So what does this have to do with, with open source? Um, I'd argue everything, right? Because open source is massive. It's, it's not just software, it's now hardware, it's data. It's moving into other parts of science and engineering that you would have never expected to have open communities built inside of them. But just thinking about the typical enterprise, it used to be that we thought about open source as freedom from lock-in. Now that might be true, but we do, a, we do two global perception studies every year. And one of the things that we found in our last wave in the spring of this year was that two-thirds of the organizations that we talked to, and this is around the globe, don't look at open source predominantly as avoiding lock-in. They actually look at it as a way to open up opportunities, right? It's a point of leverage for them. It's a way that they can take advantage of a broad community of, of creative people that are gonna give them something new that they can integrate. And so that's why as open source contributors, as open source leaders, I have a few things that I'd like to ask of you. When you think about your communities and you think about the work that you're doing to help support these enterprises that are struggling with the pace of change. So three things. The first is, um, I know the cathedral and the bazaar is uh, possibly a trigger word or a phrase for some of you. Um, you know, great work, uh, great, you know, great uh, 
um, beginning to the open source movement, um, but I actually think the metaphor applies in a slightly different way. The cathedral and the bazaar, right? Structure and chaos. These two things actually work really well together. This is a picture of La Sagrada Familia. It's um, one of Gaudi's greatest works. It's almost done. It's <laughs> been nearly 140 years worth of building it. But it's a great example of where you can take lots of structure and you can take lots of uh, organic creativity and you bring them together to something that's really great. Open source communities need to think about how you integrate with proprietary software, right? You need to think about how you work with services that might not be open source based because that's the world that the enterprise lives in. So embrace those two things together. There's a duality there that's good, it's okay, it's helping the world. Build bridges, right? Build bridges between communities and that's not just so that we can have a better collaboration with each other, but it's actually so that the end users have ramps to get into other parts of the open source ecosystem. It allows them to adopt some technology, get some value from it, and then maybe take a step across another bridge that your community has built to find something new, something useful, right? It helps them navigate between these communities. Third point, bake change into your project and your community's DNA, right? Because just like the enterprises, just like the companies and the, and the nation states are dealing with constant change in technology and science, so are you, right? This creative destruction process that we've created where new things get created, old things might go away, we need to bake that into the way our communities think. Be comfortable with the fact that we're going to constantly be changing. So those are my three requests. And, and open source, really, you know, any software, it, it gets created for users, right? The user might be a single person, the person who wrote it, or it might be a large multinational or even a nation state that's relying on that software to do something valuable you know, for their customers, for their citizens. And I started the talk by saying I had a request for you, and, and here's what it is, right? We as open source practitioners need to think more about the users that are not deeply involved in open source. We need to think more about helping them navigate this world of change. We need to think more about helping them cross between communities, cross between proprietary and open source software. So that's my request to all of you, and thank you very much.